Same week last week, and uh, start off on Tuesday with Lam uh, with Lamar here at Lambson Park. Uh, eight to nothing win. I thought it was a good, clean, good, clean, clear cut. Exactly what we should have done. Come out, take control, and start the week off with a decisive victory. Then we come back on Friday, North, North Dakota, nine to one in five innings again. You know, we allowed a run. I would like to see us get another shutout, and and that's our goal when we're playing. You know, teams outside that top 50 this year, we need to expect shutouts and, and we need to expect to score runs. And So, again, they come out with a good effort on Friday. I was a little bit worried about Sanford. With, we're afraid we'd look ahead to LSU. Thought that was a place where we might end up getting in a better ball game than what we needed to be or, or not take control of the game like I, like I want to, like we need to. But the girls responded well and didn't get the run rule, but they got the 7-0 win. And then we come back with LSU here at home. Later that night on Saturday, crowd was phenomenal. The atmosphere was electric. It was just big time college softball, and and as good an atmosphere as you could possibly ask for early in the season. And we come out with a two to one win, so we're sky high. We go on the road to LSU on Sunday. I wanted, and you know, my message pregame was let's attack the first pitch. When you're on the road, be aggressive. Let's let's, let's really get up there and be quick with our bats. And first pitch they throw over the plate, let's hit. And I wanted to come out aggressive, and I thought that, you know, Tally did a good job, got on base for us. She's been phenomenal. We put her in the leadoff spot the last five games. She's batting 533. Um, just really been an uplifting um, position for us since we put her in the leadoff. Anyway, we got the, got the position in. We had three and four up with a runner in scoring position, and we didn't get her in, and I felt like we missed the opportunity to set the tone for the ball game. And then – we got down. We came back. We got. We, I liked how they responded. One of the things we talk about all the time when we get behind, we want to be the best come from behind team in America. And when they punch, we're going to punch back. And they scored two. We scored two. Thrilled at that point. Got behind three, two. Come right back. Scored scored another run. Got three, three. Had the opportunity to take the lead there. Dalton hit a ball right to the wall. And they made a good play on it. Romans hit a ball that the second base made a great play on. I thought LSU played tremendous defense yesterday. Uh, they had the only error of the game, but they made some really huge plays at huge moments. So I felt I felt they played a really, really, really hard good clean series with us and at the end of the, end of the day they come out with a 4-3 uh, victory over us and uh, you know I, I wanted to win they wanted to win I wanted to win I, we fell short but overall I got to be really optimistic and positive to about our uh, team at this point I think it's important that the girls know I really am happy with their performance and I like the effort. I liked how they went on the road. They didn't. We saw some really big things from young players, players that have just got here. Uh, we saw a big effort out of Mayu. We saw a big effort out of Roman, even though she didn't get a hit. The, the, what she did there and then the catches she made out in right field, she's settling in. We saw some really positive things. And, of course, Tally stepping up for us and giving us a true leadoff at this point in the season. All those are really uh, – Good, optimistic things I have to look forward to. Coach, uh, speaking about Kai Kendall Tally, uh, was that something where you were just going to play her against the little team Lamar and she played so well that you're like, let me just stick with her? Or was it, what was the thinking there? No, she had 333 in the fall and she had 389 in the January, February preseason practices. And I had penciled her in to start. The game four and game six of the season, I had a seven-game rotation. When we lost game three to North Texas, I changed it. I didn't put her in. I went home and thought about that night, and I thought, you know, that, that might be a big mistake. We got to get her in and look at her and uh, give her a shot because she, she earned her shot. You know, we don't give, we really don't give anybody anything. She'd earned it. She'd really been a tough out. I mean, if you ask Summer and Kleiss who the toughest out on the team is, they may see Tally. She's one of those kids that just really hard nose in practice. So I, I told her, I said, hey, I didn't start you game four. I'm going to start you. Where do you want to bat in the lineup? She said, I want to be leadoff. I said, well, then you're leadoff. Let's do it. I like that. I thought that was a really good answer. It took guts for her to say that, but that's the kind of kid she is. And, you know, that's our job as coaches, to give people chances. And she put her in. She's 533. So, yeah, she earned her position and she earned her spot. And we're going to leave her there as long as we're, as long as we're getting the kind of production we are. And she's setting us up the way she is. We'll just keep leaving her there.
Mm. You know, I think that if you know softball and you know our roster, you, you have reason to believe or you have reason to have expectations that this team's very good. But I guess that's right. They go on the road maybe against LSU and then stand our ground here at home against a really hot LSU ball club. I mean, they're really playing good at this point in the season. So, yeah, maybe to people outside, you know, looking in, it probably is validation. But I think to ourselves, I mean, like I know what we have. We have the potential to get way better than we are right now. We have the obligation to work really hard and get better than we are right now. So for for people on the outside, I think it probably was validation. But for us, it's you know more reason to get it, get a little bit hungrier, a little bit grittier, get our uniforms a little bit more dirty, and get the job done. I heard you mention yesterday, I think on the field, about being aggressive, and that's what got you the 3-3. I think it's important when you're on the road that we don't ever show any intimidation and we don't show any uh, passiveness. You know, there's old saying that timid timidity has no power. You know, being passive, you have no power. The uh, power always goes to people that are aggressive and people that demand and people that are aggressive. And so, especially when once we got the lead yesterday, when we got the lead, I'm ready. Let's go. You know, I'll do anything. I'll hit and run. I'll steal a base. We'll we'll go. You know, everything goes out the window when you get the when you get the opportunity that you're tied on the road and you go for the lead. At home, I want to be in the lead, and then I'll throw everything out the window. And so, I want my kids to be like that. Like I want them to, and I try to in pregame. Like I want them swing at that first pitch fast. Ball. I don't want the umpire to call for strike one. I want to hit strike one. And, you know, we got to learn those lessons. And when we learn those lessons, we're going to get even better on the road. Because that's how you win on the road. You win on the road by letting it go. Do you feel like the game against LSU at home was a postseason atmosphere? So, one more. The game against LSU at home, do you feel like that was a postseason, postseason atmosphere? Uh, I thought it was a great college atmosphere. Like, it was electric at Lambda Park. Lambda Park is a special, special place. It's why kids from all over the country want to come here and play. Our fans, you know, we just can't say enough about how good and how important our fans are to our program. And, you know, for me as a coach, I can never, ever express my appreciation and how much I value that experience for our players and the teams that come in here. And I thought I thought the LSU game here, it was electric. And I thought it was even like I've been in Super Regionals where it's really intense. You know, Tennessee, Georgia, Tennessee, A&M, big time Super Regionals. And that, that crowd was actually, I thought, better than a Super Regional. It was the only thing you could top it would be the College World Series environment. It was that, it was that good that night. Coach, what is a competitive series like this with LSU and the development of softball in Louisiana? I think it's really important. I think that for the young kids and the, the 9, 10, 11-year-old girls to be able to have that to, to, to watch and to, to root for and to root against, you know, on each side, I think it's, I think it's a, it could be really – you know, I would like to believe it's really important and really huge. And I know there's probably a lot of young fathers out here with a, that got to bring their girls to those games either here or at, or at Baton Rouge. And there's a great opportunity for a young, you know, for a young father to take a 10, 11 year old girl to the ballpark and see uh, a top, top, top notch college softball game. So I think it was great. I, I told Coach Beth after the game's over, I've done, I'm old. I've done a lot of things in softball. And I think. Playing those two games the way we played them, there was no arguing. The umpires were excellent. Uh, fish hitting was really good in both games. The crowds were really good. I didn't hear anything in the crowds. It was just pure sportsmanship. I think that's one of the proudest things I've done in softball. I'm proud of that, as proud of that as anything I've ever done in softball. I thought it was really a good moment for our sport and something that, you know, both LSU softball and Louisiana softball can be really proud of that we did. What, what is it that makes you have that go after the first pitch mentality, whereas, you know, maybe the conventional baseball way of thinking is work the count deep, foul some off, and make the pitcher work for it? I think learning the game, learning how to feel, learn how to feel tempo, learn how to take 
control of the game, learn how to make a statement to your opponent. It just goes with the maturity of a ball club and a team. And, you know, there's times if a pitcher's struggling, we want to go deep in the count. If we're, you know, we don't want to get ourselves out six times in a row on a first pitch pop up. But, but as, as we mature as a ball club, we're going to look for places to go for juggling. You don't want that pitcher, I don't want a home team pitcher to feel comfortable on the first pitch. I want to make her sweat on the first pitch. And if they know we're coming after it, she's going to try to hit the corners. Then she's going to get behind and we get the 3-1 count. So I like to take the first, the easy first pitch, I want to take it away, especially on the road. And, and that's my philosophy. And I think it's just something that we'll learn and our players will learn as they as they get comfortable with me and we get deeper in the season, we hopefully will mature as an offensive ball club and we'll get better. What are the things you're concerned? You're about to go on a long road trip. Like, what, what are the things you're concerned about on that trip against, especially against that kind of competition? Yeah, I worry about changing the schedule of our strength conditioning and how that could make us vulnerable to an injury two to three weeks down the road. That's one of my main concerns about this particular road trip. and. It's going to really throw our schedule off. I worry about the academic side a little bit. We're going to be on the road a lot. And this is, we're in the fourth, fifth week of semester, so I know the kids have got a lot of testing going on right now. And, and it's the first round of testing, so we, I hate that, that we have to do that right now at this time of year, because I really want my kids to, to really be good early in the semester and, and grades where they can relax more towards the end of finals. So I'm afraid we're going to be digging a little bit of hole academically. Um, but worry about those kind of things. As far on the softball side, I'm not worried. It's just win-win. If the more we play these big teams and, and tough schedule, it's just going to give us an opportunity when we get back to the Sun Belt to work for the last 30, 45 days of the season. We can work on things that we've learned, work on um, cleaning up things where we're vulnerable, and um, and we'll benefit. Just, it, we're going to when you play top talent on the softball side. There's no replacing what you learn in competition. Are you, are you still, um, do you foresee, are you kind of getting closer to a set lineup or do you still foresee a lot of changes, say, over the next 10 games, depending on the result? You know, I feel good about certain parts like – you know, I, I love how Melissa Mayo responded. I thought I thought she really – I've been – I don't want to put her in and – put so much pressure on her that she can't. I got to develop her with patience. And I, I held her out of her batch here Friday night in front of 3,000 people because I, I thought, you know, I don't want to get, she takes things really personal and she she's a high achieving kid. She's a perfectionist kid. She probably works more extra than any three players on our team. She's always working extra. And so I was trying to protect her and then I thought, when I got home, I thought, well, we'll be on the road a little bit quieter. I want to put her in. I'm going to let her at least bat today. And the way she responded was really good. So, you know, she's, I feel like we, yeah, we've established she can play now. We, we really maybe leave her in a little bit tougher situations. And then I, I think Roman's establishing that we've got to have her bat in the lineup without any doubt. So we try to, you know, we grow her a little bit more. Lead off, I'm thrilled with Tally, but I want to see how we keep going there. And then the biggest thing right now, our four holes got 11 RBIs or 12 RBIs, but our three hole, we've got to get RBIs out of the three hole. So I'm trying to find that piece. Who wants the three hole? I got to get somebody to take that spot and grab it and and become an RBI producer. And so that's that's a little thing. And you know we've been solid four four through seven, four through eight. Doesn't seem like it matters how I put them, but I'm worried about that three hole. That's that's the the, the question mark right now. State twice and Ole Miss twice versus I know they will probably be playing um, the twice. Yeah, I uh, I think it's great. It's it's a great opportunity for a program. It's going to be interesting because Ole Miss was top twenty team in the preseason, and they you know they've had a coaching change. They've had all kinds of adversity, and they really and they've 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 got they took it in the nose here the first two weekends and but you know that group of kids are going to jump back up at some point and they're going to really start to fight and they've got great scouting reports on us because of the regional the three games we played in the regional last spring 
I think that's a really dangerous set of games for us, a pair of games for us. So, because they know so much about our ball club, and then you know, if they get, if we let them get their breath and and get a little bit of swagger and confidence going, that's that team. That team worries me as I look ahead. Oklahoma State's playing really well. They're playing extremely well right now. Um, that's just a great opportunity. There's no win or lose there. We need to. We need to do our best to take at least one of those two games. It'd be nice if we could get them both. And then UAB, they're just a well-coached team. Coach Jimmy, you know, he's a, he's a great coach. Coach Guthrie, his wife, Courtney Foster Guthrie, they're great coaches. We saw that when they were here. And they've really made uh, – they've really changed the culture at UAB, and that's going to be a dangerous team. And they're going to get fired up to beat Glasgow. You know, there's no doubt. Those guys are living and breathing this opportunity this week. And <coughs> – We'll we'll talk all week. I've already talked to them today, and we'll be joking around. But they're going to put it out there against our ball club. So we got five really hard games this weekend ahead of us, and I think that's really good. That's what we need at this point in the season.